Hey you all, happy days going great. In this Django sitemap tutorial, you will learn how to create a sitemap.xml file which you can use to tell crawlers more about your pages, for example how often they change. So yeah, I would say let's jump right in. We want to start by creating a new project, using Django admin, start project, and then I'm going to call it Django underscore sitemap. And then we can change the directory. And we now want to create a new app and I will call it my app. And then we can open it inside of Atom and go to our Django underscore sitemap inside of the settings.py. We can add it to our installed apps. And we want to start out in the URL.py file. And we are going to make a simple setup where we have our about page located in this my app folder or this my app app. So create a new path which leads to the index and from here we want to include the myapp.urls and we want to import the include function and we can just copy this urls.py file and paste it for the myapp and in here we can create a path which leads to about and that's going to call views.about and also give it the name of about that will be important and from the current directory, we want to import the views. And next up, we will go into views.py and create a very simple view called about. And this one, instead of a render template, is just going to return an HTTP response that says about page. And then, of course, we want to go to the tab and from Django.http import HTTP response. And on the localhost 8000, we can now navigate to about and we we'll see about page. Nice. Let's now start creating our sitemap. And to do this, we are just simply going to create a new file inside of this my app called sitemaps.py. And what's very important before that actually is going to the settings.py and including it in our installed apps. And there's a package called django.contrib.sitemaps which we'll need. And then in this file, we want to make some imports. So from django.contrib.sitemaps, which we just installed, we want to import the sitemap class. And then also from django.shortcuts, we want to import reverse. And we can now create a new class called static view sitemap, which subclass is from sitemap. And this will be our sitemap for all of our static views, which might change in the future. And every single sitemap has to have a function called items. And in this case, we want to return all of the names from our paths, such as this one from the about path. So just return about. And if you have more of these static views, you would of course include them here as well. And next up, there's a function which we can override called location an item and this function should return a path for every single item and in this case we only have one which is about and then it gets past this about right here and in this case we want to be able to figure out how we can return the correct path and that's why we imported this reverse function so we can simply return the reverse of item because item in this case is the name for our path and therefore it should work fine. And next up we want to go inside of our main urls.py file and we want to import all of the sitemaps. In this case we already have one from myapp.sitemaps. We want to import static view, view sitemap. And then we can create a new dictionary called sitemaps. And we want to give it the key of static and the value of static view sitemap because we'll need to pass this dictionary in a moment. And right underneath this path, we can now create a path sitemap.xml. The name is very important in this case. And next up, we want to pass it a view called sitemap. And this one comes from the sitemap framework. So from django.contrib.sitemaps.views, we want to import sitemap. And then it wants a dictionary with the key of sitemaps which in turn contains all of our other sitemaps in this other dictionary. 
So pass them here. Okay, and then don't forget the comma. Otherwise, we'll get an error. And let's visit sitemap.xml. And you can see that we get an XML file which contains a location for our URL. Nice. And next up, we want to take a look at how we can do the same with object detail pages. So let's go in here inside of models.py. Let's say we like to create a snippet model, which upload from models.model. And we want to give this class a title, which is a models.char field. Then a slug, which is a models.slug field. And we set required equal to false. And then we also want to create a body field, which is a models.text field. And then up on saving, we want to, of course, generate the slug from the title. So this takes in the self arguments and keyword arguments. And then here we can set self.slug equal to slugify the self.title. And slugify is a function from Django utils. So go to the tab and from django.utils.text import slugify. And as soon as we have that, we can call the superclass to actually save our model to the database with the arguments and keyword arguments. Okay, that should work. And we can go back and now make our migrations. And in this case, required as false, we need to actually use blank equals true for our admin view and then null equals true for the database. Okay. So let's try that again. Make the migrations. And of course, make sure to pass a max length to this char field. I'm going to set it to 150. And then we can migrate. And next up, we want to create a couple of simple instances for this snippet. So manage the pipe shell will be the easiest way. And from myapp.models, we want to import the snippet. And then snippet.objects.create. Let's just say the title will be equal to h1 snippet. And then the body will be this simple h1 opening and closing tag. And call dot safe. And there's a comma missing. And we'll do the same with h2. And that will be enough. Can quit out. And now we want to create a real path for actually accessing our detail views. And this one is going to take in a slug. And it's quite simply just going to call views snippet underscore detail. And then we want to go back and create a function called snippet detail. It takes in the request and the slug. And it's just going to return an HTTP response with an F string. This should be the detail view for the slug of, and then use the interpolation syntax. And before doing that, we want to make sure that the instance actually exists with this slug. So we can set snippet equal to get object or 404 for the snippet model and slug should be equal to slug. And then we want to make a couple of imports. From shortcuts, we want to import get object or 404. And then from dot models, we want to import snippet. Quite a bit of setup work, but you'll see that it will pay out in a moment. Okay. And let's see how that works. Manage a pi run server. And let's try to access any random slug. And we'll see 404. No snippet matches the given query. And then we have one called h1 snippet, I think. So the slug for that should be h1, then dash snippet. And you see, this should be the detail view for the slug of h1 snippet. And then h2 snippet should also work. But h3 snippet should fail because we don't have that one. So yeah, that's working. And now we actually want to include all of the snippets which we have in our sitemap. And that's actually quite simple to do. And we just need to go back to our sitemaps.py file and create a new class called snippet sitemap, 
which subclasses from sitemap. And again, this has to have the items function. And in this case, we simply want to return snippet.objects.all. And now we can go back to our urls.py file in the main URL conf and also add the snippet, snippet sitemap. Okay. And let's see how that's working. Of course, we need to import it. So let's fit it sitemap.xml and you will see an error but that wasn't the error I was talking about so from dot models import snippet and after refreshing you should see another error still you see snippet object has no attribute get absolute url so what the sitemap framework is doing is relying on the get absolute url function of a snippet and of course it has to use it to actually identify where in a url this single snippet is accessible and we can quite simply just provide the function get absolute URL takes in the self. And this is just going to return an S string with a slash and then self dot slug like this. And you will see localhost 8000 h1 snippet and h2 snippet. And if we were to add more snippets, of course, our sitemap would expand now because we specified the items as snippet objects dot all. So it will automatically go and capture all of the snippets. But of course, if you had some other configuration, you could also use the filter method. However, you want it to customize what is accessible in this XML file and what is not. And if you look in the documentation, you will find other properties which you can use on this sitemap to tell search engines more about it, such as the change frequency. You could change that to always. And we'll display right here or to hourly, that will also work. But this is really the gist of how you can create sitemaps. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a comment down below if you did and subscribe to this channel. I hope to see you inside of the next one and cheers.